I'd like to present to you this morning some data from a phase three trial of the BRAF inhibitor vemurafenib combined with a second drug, a MEK inhibitor, cobimetinib, compared to vemurafenib alone in patients, in this case with BRAF mutant melanoma, which is approximately 40% of patients uh, with, uh, with melanoma. So this was the study design. So uh, approximately 500 patients were randomised. They had advanced melanoma with a BRAF mutation and they had not received any prior systemic therapy for advanced melanoma. So this was a first-line clinical trial and they had to have good performance status. So the patients were randomised one-to-one to vemurafenib, um, the BRAF inhibitor, plus cobimetinib, which is a MEK inhibitor, versus vemurafenib alone. And the primary endpoint of the, the study was progression-free survival. That is, uh, that was met if patients' disease progressed uh, radiologically or clinically, or if they had uh, passed on. And the key secondary endpoint was overall survival. So why do we do this study? Well, we did this study really based on some wonderful preclinical science that's been done that examined why patients become resistant to BRAF inhibitors. There's been a concerted effort globally to understand why a BRAF inhibitor might stop working in a melanoma patient. And what was found was that there was nearly always reactivation of cell growth through this MEK protein. So that's why cobimetinib, the MEK inhibitor, was added to vemurafenib. So what were the uh, key results uh, of the trial? So these are the progression-free uh, survival curves. So um, if you look at the um, uh, two groups here numerically, the vemurafenib plus placebo, the control group, and then the vemurafenib plus cobimetinib, the BRAF plus the MEK inhibitor, there were 128 patients who progressed or died on the vemurafenib arm and 79 uh, patients on the vemurafenib plus cobimetinib arm. This um, uh, led to a median progression-free survival of 6.2 months for vemurafenib and 9.9 .9 months for vemurafenib and cobimetinib. And to recalculate those data in the way that we feel is most clinically meaningful, which is to look at the hazard ratio for progression or death, there was a 49% reduction in the risk of uh, progression or death favouring the combination of vemurafenib and cobimetinib. In addition to uh, analysing progression-free survival at the investigator sites, an independent panel also um, reviewed all of the information. And as you can see, the results are really quite uh, similar. I get you to focus on a 40% reduction in the hazard of uh, progression or of uh, death uh, favouring the vemurafenib and cobimetinib arms. So what about safety? So this is a complicated slide, but let me walk you through it. So these are adverse events in patients uh, that occurred with a frequency of more than 20%. On the left side of this uh, graph is the adverse events for vemurafenib plus placebo. You can see the percentages on the bottom. On the right side is the combination of vemurafenib plus cobimetinib. And I draw your attention to the way we've colour-coded the grading of the, uh, of the adverse events. So green is grade one or mild, and Dr. Weber previously introduced to you the ones that we most concerned about as oncologists are the grade three and four events, which are in yellow or in red. So what did we find regarding the adverse events? Well, gastrointestinal adverse events were more common with a combination, diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting. However, you'll see they're mostly green or grade one, and they were managed by investigators uh, with supportive care med medications or occasionally dosage uh, uh, interruption. Um, in terms of other side effects, uh, there's photosensitivity or uh, sunburn in these patients that was slightly more common on the combination arm. But interestingly, hyperkeratosis or overgrowth of the skin, which is a known side effect of BRAF inhibitors such as vemurafenib, was significantly lower with the combination. And that's because the MEK inhibitor, not only does it make... Uh, the patient's melanoma respond better, but it actually reverses and reduces this particular side effect, which is a very interesting uh, finding. Uh, there were some laboratory abnormalities, uh, particularly the uh, uh, creatine phosphokinase increase. This is a known side effect of MEK inhibitors, but it's not clinically significant and it doesn't cause symptoms for the patients. All other side effects were similar between the two arms. So in conclusion, 
you know, I've shown you the results of the Cobrim study, which we believe uh, gives clear and definitive evidence that cobimetinib combined with vemurafenib results in improved progression-free survival and increased overall response rate. We also looked at overall survival, and I'll mention that in a moment, and the preliminary overall survival analysis is in fact promising as well which I think is actually very important because we're comparing here a very active drug for melanoma, vemurafenib, and we're adding a second drug on, and yet still we get these quite striking results. So with regards to the combination of vemurafenib and cobimetinib compared to vemurafenib, there was a 49% reduction in the risk of progression or death. The response rate, 68% versus 45%, a very significant difference. And in fact, complete response or complete disappearance of disease occurred in 10% of patients with a combination compared to 4% with the vemurafenib alone. We did do interim overall survival analyses. Uh, this was uh, planned at the time we did this progression-free survival uh, analysis. However, it is uh, preliminary and has not crossed the boundary that we would call significant at this stage. However, it is very promising because there is a 35% reduction in the risk of death favouring the combination arm. With regards to the adverse event profile, we found that uh, these uh, drugs in combination were tolerable and manageable and were very consistent with what we'd seen in previous trials. And I just want to acknowledge um, the patients and their families especially that contributed to this clinical trial and the worldwide effort from 20 countries that uh, contributed to this trial. Thank you very much.